Why is matzo flat, but bread's fluffy? Yeast or a chemical leavening agent like baking soda or baking powder. So let me liven your day with a post about leavening. When you think about bread, you probably think about the starch. So like the sugary stuff. And so starch is this long chains of sugar and it's going to come into play with fermentation. But there's other stuff in bread, including proteins. So you might have heard of gluten. So gluten is actually a uh, mix of these proteins called glutenin and gliadin. And what happens when you have this is that they kind of form this network throughout your bread dough or your batter or whatever it is. And it's flexible. Um, this goo is flexible and so it can expand. And it's going to expand if there is gas forming inside of it, because in a gas, the molecules have a lot of energy. And so they're trying to um, like escape and move away from one another. But when this happens inside of your dough, it's kind of trapped, but you have this flexible network. And so you're going to have your dough um, or your batter is going to expand. And so we call this process um, leavening. So it can happen in different ways depending on how this gas is formed. And so it can happen in biological ways. So in a process called fermentation, this is how we get the leavening coming, in, coming from yeast. And we'll talk more about this process in a minute. But it happens when in the process of yeast trying to make energy um, and in this like anaerobic way. So without oxygen um, and in a different way than we actually use um, in our bodies. And this way that they use is going to produce this gas is gonna produce CO2. This is a similar process as is going to be taking place way in wine say. Um, and because this process also makes ethanol um, and that is why wine is going to make you drunk. But there are other ways to make gas. And so they're also like chemical leavening agents. And so a couple of common examples are baking soda and baking powder. And we'll talk more about these in a bit. Um, but they're going to use an acid base um, reaction. And so baking soda just has the base. And you have to add some sort of acid, um, something times things like vinegar or honey, um, molasses tartar, lemon juice, yogurt, various things like that. Um, but the baking powder, it has it, um, it has them combined already um, and often some sort of um, thing to keep them apart. And we'll talk more about that as well as about like various um, in baking powder, there's often like a fast acting part and a slow acting part um, to kind of control the speed of the reaction. So these are what we're going to get into. But let's start with the idea of this leavening. So leavening is going to give us the production of alcohol. And so it, this is going to burn off when you're making some sort of bread. And so this is why your bread's not going to get you drunk, um, but your wine uh, might because here you're not going to be um, like heating and evaporating off the ethanol that is formed. It's also going to produce this um, CO2. And so CO2 is going to be the part that is actually going to be producing this air bubbles. And then the ethanol is kind of like a byproduct um, that's the U that is produced when they are making, um, when they're kind of regenerating this thing called NAD+. So what happens is that they're trying, they're not trying to make gas, they're not trying to make ethanol, they're trying to make ATP. And so ATP is the form of like energy storage. So ATP, it has these three negatively charged phosphate groups. So these phosphorus surrounded by oxygen. It's kind of like a clamp spring. Um, and so this is going to be very uncomfy. Negative charges don't like to be next to each other. They're going to repel one another. And so it takes energy to hold them together. And so these bonds are what we call high energy or they have high chemical potential energy. Kind of like a ball at the top of a ramp has a high potential energy. Um, so if you were to drop this ball and you were to have something, it could like push that something off. If you were to unclamp that spring, you could kind of push something off. And so breaking these bonds is going to give you energy and cells can have different enzymes or different reaction helpers and different things like that, that are going to allow them to use this ATP kind of like a 
kind of like a um, like an arcade token. So you can use different sources of energy, like fats and carbs and various um, proteins, and convert the energy that those hold into ATP. And then different molecules can use these ATP in all sorts of different reactions. And but in order to convert the energy from your food into or from food and thus into the um, into ATP, there are different processes that that can occur. And so we call like the breakdown of um, molecules um, catabolism. So it's a form of metabolism, um, which is the making and breaking of molecules. So you have anal anabolism, which is making molecules, think like anabolic steroids, and catabolism, which is breaking down molecules. And so in our bodies, one of the common ways that we break down uh, molecules into AT get to get ATP is through like cellular respiration, um, starting with like glycolysis, which is the breakdown of sugars. Then we could take this even further, go through um, citric acid cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation where we get this big payoff. Um, and so in order to do, so this glycolysis is gonna be this breakdown of sugars. Um, and it happens in all these different steps and it's going to give us like pyruvate, which we then take and we put through this, um, we oxidize it, we put it through a citric acid cycle, and then we do this oxidative phosphorylation where we get a bunch of ATP out of it. But there are other alternatives offered to other, um, other microbes and stuff like that. So they um, still do this glycolysis, but now they're going to do something different with that pyruvate that they make. So when we're talking about cellular respiration, so this is the, all this stuff, this is like um, aerobic. So it's going to require oxygen because what's gonna happen is in this electron transport chain, you're actually having oxygen accepting um, electrons. So basically here, you're basically passing these electrons off. And so uh, more on what this means in other posts, but the electrons are one of the parts um, that make up atoms. They're these negatively charged little things. And um, we can have these like redox reactions so oxidation and reduction, um, where oxidation is losing electrons, reduction is gaining electrons. And so when you have this process is occurring, we can kind of pass these electrons off from one molecule to another. And then in the process of um, this electron transport chain, we can pass these electrons off and use this to pump out protons. So these positively charged um, particles, and then we pump those out, we make this gradient, and then we use this kind of like a dam where this one, um, thing going through or like a hydrolytic dam. And then we use the energy from that to make this little, this protein move and use that movement to produce ATP. So it's this really, really cool process and it's relying on the passing off of these electrons. And one of the common passer offers is NADH. Um, and so this can get pa and pass off an electron um, to, can um, to give you um, NAD plus and a proton. So we're going to be cash. We're going to be doing all of this stuff. And this the ways when I got this in this talk is because you have this oxygen here that's going to be this acceptor of the electrons at the end of this chain. And so we need this oxygen, and this is called an aerobic um, aerobic respiration. Um, you can also have anaerobic, um, where you're not going to be making you're not going to be using all that oxygen-y stuff. Um, so, and without um, air. So basically what happens is in our bodies, if we want, we can take this pyruvate and we can actually um, convert it in a different way and we're gonna get um, like lactate. Um, but in yeast um, and some other microbes, basically what can happen is that they have this enzyme called pyruvate decarboxylase. So decarboxy, um, so carboxy, so think, um, so this is like carbon dioxide side, um, carbon oxygen, so this here is car two, carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is a gas in this case, um, under these, like under normal conditions, typically we think of. Um, and so this carbon dioxide gas is then, this is going to be what's going to make the bread rise. 
it's also going to produce acid aldehyde. And it's this acid aldehyde um, that now the yeasts are going to convert into ethanol. And they're not doing it because the yeast want to get drunk. They're doing it because they need to regenerate this NAD+. So they don't even get any ATP in the process of doing this. They're just trying to regenerate this NAD+. So in our bodies, basically what we're going to do is we take this NADH that we generate and we use it to actually generate more energy. Um, and so this, these are going to go through that oxidative phosphorylation and these are going to give us that energy. Um, they're going to help pass off the electrons. But here they need to regenerate this in order to keep glycolysis going because glycolysis depends on having this NAD+. Plus that they can then use in order to get that initial payout of the ATP from the glycolysis. So in order to keep this glycolysis going, they need to regenerate this. And they can regenerate it by converting acetaldehyde to ethanol. And see, they're reducing this, they're oxidizing this, and now they can then reduce it again. So this ethanol is going to be this byproduct of this. And this ethanol and this CO2 is going to be the byproduct of this conversion. But all of this is happening so that they can keep this going and keep this ATP um, formation happening. But then we can take advantage of those byproducts. So we talked about how bread has like starch, which are these long chains of these individual sugars. But for glycolysis, they need those individual sugar units, those individual glucose um, monosaccharides. And so in order to, for the yeast to get going, they kind of need the starch to be broken down. But flour is going to provide these for the yeast um, because the flour's grain kernels need to be able to break down the starch in their kernels when they want to germinate. And then once the, um, so they have the inside of these fl the flour, it has these enzymes, so these reaction like speeder upper mediator facilitators um, called amylases. And so this is going to kind of like free chew the starch for the yeast. And then once it's broken down into smaller pieces, then um, the yeast can use different use enzymes that they have. So maltase and sucrase enzymes that break down the smaller pieces into individual glucoses. And then they can use that glucose um, to ferment and make gas from. When we talk about like what happens in wine, how that gets broken down is they use this enzyme called invertase to break down sucrose, so which is glucose plus fructose into individual glucose and fructose units. Um, and then they can go through this fermentation process. That was a biological leavening agent, but they're also like chemical leavening agents. So where we don't involve any like living things. And an example of this is our baking soda and baking powder. And so these are going to use like acid-base interactions. And so an acid is some, um, something that donates a proton and a base is something that takes a proton, um, at least in one definition of the, for, of the term. Um, and so protons are these H plus molecules. The more protons you have, the more acidic a solution is and the lower the pH because the pH is a measure of the concentration of protons, but it's in an inverse um, scale, inverse log scale. And so the more protons you have, the lower the pH and the more acidic the solution. And then an acid is going to donate protons and a base is going to take protons. In this um, reaction that is going to happen, you can have sodium bicarbonate. Um, so sodium here is just going to be a big counter ion. So this bicarbonate, you see it's negatively charged. Um, and so it's going to hang out with this positively charged sodium. But um, it can lose, uh, I mean, it can gain a proton, so it can protonate to form carbonic acid. And whether or not it's going to do this is going to depend on the pH and because it's going to depend on the proton availability. And so when you have a high pH, you are going to be primarily in this bicarbonate form because there's not that many protons, but a little low pH, you're going to be predominantly in this um, carbonic acid form. 
And this is important because this carbonic acid can react to form water and carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide is that gas that is going to make our bread rise. So it's gonna rely on this acid-base interaction. When you have baking soda, you just have the base. So you just have the sodium, you just have this bicarbonate. In order to produce the carbonic acid, we need to acidify the solution so we can make the carbonic acid that can then um, break down into water and carbon dioxide. So typically this is something like buttermilk, brown sugar, yogurt, lemon juice, vinegar, cream of tartar, molasses, applesauce, or honey. Um, and cooking often involves trying to get the right ratios um, so you don't have too much acid, which would make it sour, or too much base, which would make it taste all soapy or metallic. So baking soda just had the base, so it just had the sodium bicarbonate, um, but the baking powder is going to have the base and the acid, so you don't have to add the acid separately. So, but what keeps it from reacting? Well, a couple of things. One is that there's cornstarch to help keep them apart, and another is that there's no water. And so these are in their solid form, their salt form. So a salt is when you have a positive and a negative um, charged thing, and they kind of, they're hanging out together to give you a neutral compound um, or a new, neutral complex. And so when you have like sodium bicarbonate, this is gonna be hidden. Um, so this is no desire to hang out with the proton because it already has a positively charged thing hanging out with it. And so um, you're going to have these in the salt form and it's not going to be reactive. But then when you had water, they're going to dissolve. And so then they're in their like free form and now they are ready to react. And they're gonna often react in two phases when you have this like dual acting baking powder that has these two components, it has a fast acting component, often monocalcium phosphate or MCP, and a slow acting component, um, so often like sodium aluminum sulfate or SAS. This fast acting component, it is going to give up its protons quickly and it's gonna rapidly react when you get it wet. Um, so it's going to rapidly react with that baking soda. And this is going to release like 60 to 70% of the available carbon dioxide within two minutes. And what this is going to do, it's, it's going to kind of like make up mini bubbles all throughout your dough. And then what happens is when you add heat, you're going to activate the second component, the slow acting component. So the, like the sodium aluminum sulfate often, the SAS. This is now active and it's going to take advantage of all of those tiny little mini bubbles throughout. So this was doing the hard work, making those initial bubbles. And now it's kind of going to expand those existing bubbles, which are nicely spread out throughout your dough. So that you can get a nice like fluffy, um, hopefully consistent texture like throughout your dough or your batter or whatever it is. Um, and so having these two components helps control things um, and also like the consistency and all of the various stuff. Um, and so hopefully your dough or your batter turns out the way that you want it to. There are also um, other forms of leavening, like mechanical leavening, such as like using air or like whipping. Um, so like a ready whip can or whatever, where you have like compressed air. Um, there are various ways um, of mechanical leavening as well as the chemical leavening and the biological leavening, so like the yeast. 